Hey everybody, welcome back. Josh here. I wanted to do a quick video on a new feeder that I've been using on a couple of these hives and uh, kind of walk through that process. I'm going to go ahead and apologize if I have to clear my throat or cough throughout this video. I'm getting over a touch of a cold that I picked up from my daughter. So it is what it is. So hopefully you all will bear with me on that. So it is September time here in Kentucky. We are in the throes of feeding all of the colonies, trying to get these colonies prepared for winter. Um, all the honey supers at this point, if you've been following my channel, all the honey has been pulled. We've done all of our mite treatments on the colonies. Now I'm still going to do some oxalic acid treatments here over the next month or two, and I'll bring you along for the ride on that one as well. However, our main knockdown of the mites has already occurred with the thymol treatment, the apigard. And so I've got one, two, three, four, let's see, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 colonies that I'm trying to get ready for the winter time. Three of those colonies are in the process of requeening themselves. I'll talk about that a little bit more probably in another video as we check on those three colonies to see if they were able to requeen themselves successfully or if we're going to have to do some uh, recombines. <clears throat> so let's talk about feeding. So right now we are feeding sugar syrup one to one and I'm feeding a ton of it. So the current layout that I have on all of these hives is a Vivaldi board with, and I'll show you here in a minute, with a, Amazon calls them humming, hummingbird feeders, but they're those rapid feeders. It's a type of rapid feeder that sits on the top of that Vivaldi board opening. It's the same opening as like a, a inner cover. So it sits on top of that and the bees are able to come up and take that syrup down. Now, pros and cons of that feeding system and why am I switching over to this type of feeder? So the, and I'll go ahead and take this off just so I can show you while I'm talking. So one advantage of the rapid feeders is that I can refill them with sugar syrup without really disturbing or getting into the colony. And so what do I mean by that? So like right now I could literally refill this colony. I'm sorry, refill this uh, feeder without disturbing the colony. And I'll bring you in here so you can see it a little bit better. Sorry, the video cut off there for a second when I was trying to get the camera off the stand. So these are your, uh, what I would call a rapid feeder. And so as you can see, it's got this cover on it. And if I take this cover off, the bees are trapped inside this little globe and I could refill this with sugar syrup and the bees would not be able to get out. And that's what I've been doing on all the other colonies here for now. The problem with that is it's great if you only have two, three, maybe four hives. But as you start to get up into the double digits, you're spending a lot of your time coming out here every, you know, two days. You, some you could come out every day as quickly as they're taking this syrup down and refilling this feeder because it only holds about, I don't know, a quart. It doesn't hold a lot. And so, you know, you refill this up to the top, put this back on there they suck it down within 24 to 48 hours. And so, you know, that's not ideal if you don't have a lot of time to come out into the bee yard like myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on the stand. Now, again, the advantage of that is the ability to get in and out without really disturbing the colony. So I thought that was good. However, you know, these hives are all light right now. Um, I pulled off the majority of the honey during the uh, extraction process during the, the, what I call late spring pull. And these are, since I only use single brood management in my apiary, they put most of their honey storage up in those supers. Now some colonies still have um, some honey in frames one and 10 and two and nine. However, with single brood management, a lot of times they store the honey up above. So by pulling the honey off, I need to immediately, after the mite treatments, 
I need to feed the colony. Although I've since found out that it's okay to feed while you're treating with apigard, so that's what I did towards the end. So, um, so that's what I've been doing. So I've been feeding all these colonies, trying to get weight on these colonies before we get into the winter time. Now, I was talking to one of the EAS master certified beekeepers that I know, Jake, and I was asking him, ideally, how much weight do I need in a single deep going into winter? And ideally, you want that weight to be comprised of sugar syrup slash honey. You don't really want the hard feed if you don't have to, the bricks. Um, so I was asking him about how much that is. I think he said around 70 pounds. So maybe 65-ish, 70 pounds for a single deep should get that colony all the way through our winter time, through our winters. So that's my goal. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, 60 pounds of syrup using these tiny little rinky-dink feeders is a lot of fill-ups. Now, again, if you only have two or three colonies and maybe you work from home and you're there all the time or you can be it, you're retired and you can be in your bee yard all day, every day, great. I was quickly finding out that what used to work great for me when I only had a handful of hives now was uh, taking me way too much time out here. And so, let me make sure my smoker doesn't go out on me while I'm standing here talking. And so I was looking for another solution. So that's when I reached out to Jake and he said, you know, we've got the Dadent, I believe is who makes these. Dadent makes these top hive feeders. So that's what this is. So this is about the size of the Vivaldi board or a super, uh, a medium. And it's made out of three quarter inch pine. All bee space is kept in mine. So underneath has a lip here so that this sits directly on top of the hive, just like a super would, or just like this Vivaldi board is. The bees can climb over the frames because the appropriate bee space has been taken into consideration here. And then on the inside here is just where the sugar syrup goes. And so this holds approximately three gallons of syrup, which I believe Jake told me translates into roughly 30 pounds of feed weight. So you fill one of these up, you leave it, however long it takes them to pull it down, and you you just put an extra 30 pounds on your hive in one visit. So there is an opening here where the bees can come up. The other ni the nice thing about this is that it goes over the hive long ways, so your frames are oriented like this. So from seam one to 10, the bees can get up in here and get into this area. Now, each one of these little rectangles has this, it's all made out of pine, except this is some sort of, I forget what the bottom board is made out of, but I would describe it almost like a, it, it's got some sort of coating on it, which makes it what I would say waterproof. Um, <coughs> excuse me think of it like a melamine or something. I'm not entirely sure what it is. It's almost like a veneer on top of it. And then this is just made out of pine and these are floats. And so this keeps the bees from drowning in the syrup. As the syrup is at the top, it'll float to the top. And then as the bees take the syrup down, the float goes down. Each side has a float. Um, an advantage of this is that this whole space is patrolled. It's patrolled space by bees. So you just saw a bunch of ants in here because there's lots of unpatrolled space inside this Vivaldi board outside of the rapid feeder. This entire space is patrolled. So ants are gonna have a hard time, hive beetles taking up residence inside here if the bees are able to patrol it. <clears throat> so that's an advantage. It's also sealed with um, a silicone all through the seams here, all down the sides here underneath. So I already tested it with just filling it up with um, tap water and it held just fine. So, the, you know, you always want to test that before you bring them out here in the yard and, you know, you, you dump three gallons of syrup in them and it just leaks all over your hive, right? That, that would not be cool. So I've been using these for a few days now. I have not checked on these two colonies over here, which currently have one of these on them. But I mean, all indication seems that they're doing just fine. And the downside of this is you can't refill it without getting in the hive. 
So you may have to, you know, fire up your smoker. You know, there could be a few things that you have to do to get in the hive. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on the hive. I may need some more smoker fuel here. I kind of lit this thing in a hurry, so it's wanting to go out on me. Come on, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and hood up here. So I've been slowly but surely taking these Vivaldi boards off and replacing them with these rapid feeders. Now I only have four of these, not rapid feeders, sorry, top high feeders. Now I only have four of those top high feeders currently. So I'll either need to order some more or wait until each of these hives is able to get up to weight and then move those, <clears throat> move those feeders down the line. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I may order some more. So they are, <coughs> excuse me, about $35 on Dadent's website. But that's not shipped. So, um, you know, that adds up if you have a lot of colonies. But these aren't staying on the colonies for long, right? It's not like the Vivaldi board that's on there the entire winter. Um, so I don't know. Just you got to decide what's right for you and your setup and how many of those you want to you wanna have. All right, let's see if we got our queen under here. I doubt it, but should always check. I don't see her. And they've already combed this up here just a little bit, but this is a full colony. I get as many bees off of the Vivaldi board as I can. And I'll scrape that later. Now, I'm not going to inspect right now. There's really no reason to. I know this colony is queen right. I checked them after I uh, put the, uh, after I removed the uh, Apigard treatment. So I know they're good. And this time of year, if, if you don't have to tear into your hives and risk of rolling or killing a queen when there's hardly any drones out anymore, <clears throat> Do yourself a favor and, and stay out of the hive. Sometimes we can do more damage than good. So super simple. Literally just set this right on top of the deep. And let me go ahead and bring you in here so you can see it a little better. Just bear with me while I move the camera. Okay, so you can see down in here, you know, the 10 frames are oriented this way. <coughs> Tons of bees are able to come up here, and this whole space can be filled with bees. So the other advantage is, think of it from a surface area perspective. This one, <coughs> I'm sorry for the coughing, guys, can't help it. This one only has a small surface area. So as the bees come up here, they're only able to draw syrup around this area, right there at the bottom. That's it. Well, yes, they can still suck this down in a matter of 24 hours to 48 hours, but imagine if they had all of this surface area to be able to take that syrup down. A strong colony like this that, you know, is 10 seams full of bees can suck this down, I bet, relatively quickly. Now I'm going to find out, and I'm going to go ahead and take these out to begin with because they tend to... <laughs> create some splashing. So just so I don't spill a bunch of syrup, I'm going to start off using the 
the nozzle here. But this just seems like a really good solution to be able to put a lot of weight on a hive in a relatively short period of time. Now, here in Kentucky, <coughs> excuse me, we still have a fall flow coming, hopefully. Uh, goldenrod is getting ready to bloom if it hasn't already. I know some fellow beekeepers have already said they're smelling the old, you know, dirty socks. I don't smell that coming out of this hive. I haven't seen any goldenrod around me blooming yet. But I know we have goldenrod around here. It's around here every year. So uh, I hope we do get a decent fall flow. I, I would, you know, my, my focus right now on every single one of these hives, except the three that are queenless, hopefully they're in the process of requeening <clears throat> or have already done that successfully. I just want to get weight on these hives and get them ready for wintertime. So now that I got this bucket, mostly, you know, it's not chock full. I'm going to go ahead and dump it. And, of course, I got yellow jackets around me. Those things are such pain in the butts, aren't they? Is there anything worse than yellow jackets? Terrible. Now, there's not enough syrup in this bucket to fill this completely full. And that's okay. I've been looking online, <clears throat> trying to brainstorm how I want to make this job a little easier, which every beekeeper gets to that point as you get more hives. I may get some sort of <coughs> pump and hose and have a bigger container, maybe a five gallon bucket or something, and then just be able to drag the hose out and fill these up that way. Seems a lot easier. So these floats, make sure you put your floats in. Um, typically the orientation is this way, but Jake says he has better luck with them this way. So I'm going to try them this way. So you just set them in there and you can see how they float. And then I just trickle a little bit of syrup down here so the colony knows, oh, there's, there's sugar syrup up here. Just kind of gives them a little bit of an incentive to want to come up here. <coughs> Typically, they'd find it anyway, but I don't know. I'm in the habit of doing that, so I do. So that's it. I mean, literally, that's it. And all of this area can be covered in bees here within the next couple of hours, right? They can all move up here and take that syrup down. And then... You just put your inner cover on and close up the hive. That easy. So yeah, uh, like I said, you can get these for yourself on data. I'll put I'll put a link down um, in the uh, description. I paid for all of these with my own money. Data didn't send me anything, so you know my opinions are my own just like they always will be but i'll let you guys know <coughs> i'm so sorry guys i'll let you guys know what i think about these uh feeders and hopefully when i come back and these are gone you know there's a substantial difference in weight on the colony that's that's the idea anyway so that's it let, let me know what you guys think in the comments let me know if you've ever used these feeders and what your experience is with them but uh, i apologize for the hacking and the coughing but uh, until then, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.